Hello and welcome to Chairside Live. I'm your host, Megan Strong. In today's show, Dr. Bai is dealing with a patient who has a posterior edentulous ridge. He gets to work creating the correct spacing mesiodistally and buccolingually. He's placing Han implants and restoring with Bruxer screw retained restorations. And when it comes time to place the implants, he has to manage a bony defect. Let's see how it all comes together in this exciting case. Dr. Bai, take it away. Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of Chairside Live. My name is Dr. Abai, and I am going to go over a case uh, which is a little bit more challenging. So a step above uh, your, your basic simple implant placement. Uh, the patient presented with a uh, edentulist uh, residual ridge uh, and the mandibular right posterior. So the patient was missing teeth number 29, 30, and 31. And as you can see here, uh, the patient has an existing crown on tooth number 32 and mesiodistally uh, fairly wide ridge. To determine uh, buccolingually, my technique is to review a comb beam CT scan, uh, but we'll get there um, in a little bit. So uh, when I was presented with this patient, uh, I wanted to go ahead and treatment plan and place an implant. Now one way of doing that uh, is to take measurements of the ridge uh, utilizing a, a measuring device. So uh, you can see that I took my measurements and I did the math and I can place uh, three Han implants uh, in these locations. Um, this is a little bit more advanced. So if you're going to be placing implants in a situation like this, uh, my first recommendation is to take an impression and have the laboratory fabricate a surgical stent. Um, which um, is based on a diagnostic wax up and it will make it a lot easier to place the implants in the proper location. Uh, that was going to be a little bit tricky in this case because the patient had a defect uh, in the area of 29. So um, just having a surgical stent would not have been enough in the situation. And uh, we freehanded the implants and I was confident that I would be able to get the implants in a fairly parallel uh, situation, placing the implants freehand, and also I can uh, take care of that defect, uh, which you'll see in just a second. So uh, I go ahead and get the patient anesthetized and reflect a full thickness flap, and I clean the ridge of any um, soft tissue. I, I want to make sure that I don't have any uh, soft tissue on my ridge, and there you can see that in the area of number 29, I have a defect. So I want to go a little bit more distal and um, the part of the treatment plan which is going to be a little bit more challenging later on is whether we can get a screw retained restoration or not. And I will present that uh, later on in this video. So I take the patient through the osteotomy drills and I go ahead and create my osteotomies uh, for the procedure. Um, with each drill, normally what I like to do is um, check the angulation and make sure that I'm going in the proper direction. Also, I'll place my first implant um, in the area of tooth number 29 in this situation, and then I can have a, a measurement um, based on where that implant is. So I don't create all three of my osteotomies at the same time. I place my first implant in this situation, and then I go back and retake my measurements, and I make sure that I'm far enough away from uh, this next implant. So the first implant is in place and uh, I'll go ahead and create my osteotomy for the next two implants to be placed. All right, so we go with our initial drill and again I want to check the angulation with radiographs as I'm moving along with the osteotomy. So I don't want to go too far and not be able to correct my angulation with the subsequent drills uh, that we have in the uh, Han kit. Here I'm using a shaping drill um, to create the exact shape of the implant um, within my osteotomy. And uh, our initial shaping drill has the correct size of uh, the parallel pins. So I can use the parallel pins uh, within that initial osteotomy and I can take a radiograph. And as you can see here, uh, we are fairly parallel 
uh, with our angulation. So it's a lot to, uh, to take in, uh, having the implants uh, in the proper position, mesiodistally, and also having the correct angulation. And uh, you'd have to be a little bit more advanced to be able to um, place these implants in that situation. So our osteotomies are complete, and um, the next step is to take our implants and place them within the osteotomy. Uh, so uh, the implants are placed in the proper position. And um, I'll move forward uh, once the implants are in the proper position with uh, delivering the healing abutments. And once the healing abutments are in place, I can suture everything back together um, and try to create as much of a primary closure as possible with the suturing. So the healing abutments are in place uh, in this situation and uh, we have a nice clean uh, implant surgery. Uh, the implants are fairly parallel to each other and now we go back and add uh, some bone graft to the buckle of that ridge defect. Uh, here I'm utilizing Newport Biologics Allograft along with uh, a resorbable membrane. Uh, this membrane resorbs within three to four months and uh, I'm actually utilizing the healing abutments to stabilize the membrane in place and uh, I will layer the flap over the top of the membrane to secure everything. Uh, so uh, I'm not using any uh, bone tacks in this situation. I'm using uh, the periosteum to help stabilize my membrane along with the suturing. And uh, as you can see here, uh, the sutures are in place. And four months later, the patient returns for the final impression uh, appointment. I decided to scan uh, these implants. I wanted to take the digital route uh, to fabricate the final restorations. So I placed scan bodies on top of the implants. I always take a radiograph uh, to make sure that the scan bodies are in the correct position and they're seated properly. Otherwise, your final restorations are not going to be uh, down all the way. So uh, I take the scan with the scan bodies in place and this information can now digitally be sent to Glidewell for the final restorations. So uh, we have uh, all the information, the arch that we're working on, uh, the opposing and the bite registration. And within the software, I mark uh, the numbering of the teeth for the final restorations. Um, and the lab will be able to correspond with me on which teeth we're working on and which restorations. So once the lab receives this information, they can utilize uh, software in order to design the final restoration. Um, my prescription for these restorations was that I wanted a narrow occlusal table, uh, buccal lingually, uh, so a little bit narrower restoration. And um, we had a little bit of, uh, of, a, of a limit uh, distally, so tooth number 31, um, and occlusally it was a little bit uh, limited, uh, but the lab was able to uh, fabricate a final restoration for me. And um, I requested Bruxer uh, screw retain crowns in this situation. Sometimes the lab will uh, give me a call and let me know that uh, a screw retain crown is not possible, so then we can just uh, fabricate a cement retain on top of a custom abutment. Uh, however, in this situation, we were able to fabricate a screw retain crown uh, for all three of these restorations. So you can see here uh, we have tooth number 29, 30, and 31 all seated uh, with a screw retain restoration. Uh, now going back to uh, my surgery, um, I had the defect of the mesial uh, of that edentulous ridge in the area of tooth number 29. So um, I was locked into place in having that tooth, uh, the replacement for that tooth, number 29, a little bit further distal. And um, that is the reason why the screw access hole is a little bit further distal in that situation. Um, now I, I'll go ahead and uh, torque uh, the restorations into place uh, to 35 Newton centimeters. And I'll place Teflon and composite uh, in the screw channels. And uh, once everything is cured, I'll go back and check the occlusion. Uh, this part of it is also going to be very important. I'm confident that um, biomechanically I'm, I'm sound here. I have nice restorations. I have very good crown to root ratios with these restorations. However, uh, I want to make sure that um, I am slightly out of occlusion 
uh, in this scenario. So I'll check the occlusion with shim stock and articulating paper uh, and make the adjustments and polish my restorations. And uh, here you can see that um, the day of delivery of these uh, final restorations, we have nice emergence profiles from the buckle view, and uh, we have a, a very strong foundation uh, with the Han implants and the Bruxer screw retained crowns uh, for a long lasting solution for this patient. Well, I want to thank you for uh, taking the time to uh, watch this video and join us here at uh, Chairside Live. And I look forward to sharing more information and more material in the near future. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you for that, Dr. Bai. Well, that about wraps it up for this episode of Chairside Live. On behalf of everyone here at Global Laboratories, thank you for watching. And I'll meet you right back here next time. <laughs>